So, after my Bugatti Chiron analysis video, I got a few questions regarding electric turbochargers, sort of what are the pros and cons, and if they would have worked out well for that vehicle. I couldn't really find much information on the internet that was already existing of how these work, so I thought I'd just explain how an electric turbocharging system works and sort of start to go into some of the pros and cons. So in a standard turbocharging system, we basically just ignore this part of the equation. We have a turbo with a compressor, compressor's air, goes around the compressed air, gets fed through an intercooler which cools it, goes into the throttle body, goes through the engine, comes out as exhaust gas, and then it comes down to the turbine where heat energy is extracted from it, used to provide um, mechanical work to the shaft, which powers the compressor. So basically, the engine is powering the turbo, which just improves the density of the air for the engine, so the engine can produce more power all up. Now, most of you if you're watching this video probably already know that, and you probably know about the phenomenon of turbo lag, which basically a turbo reduces the throttle response of your engine because this has inertia, takes time to spool up and down, and won't always be at its optimal boost, which is the pressure at which the turbo is operating. Most production turbocharger systems will also have something of a bypass duct, which means that if you close the throttle, this bypass duct will open here, allowing airflow to circulate around on its own circuit. The reason behind this is, is the compressor can continue to rotate, allowing the gas from the turbine to keep the compressor spooled, well, the entire assembly spooled, the entire time when you lift up the throttle. You can see if this wasn't here, we try to get the air to sort of flow back, and this is going to cause turbo surge, which is when you hear the doo -doo 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 noise, that's what you're hearing, which isn't great for your compressor wheel, and also will spool down your turbo at a more rapid rate than bypassing it. And the reason I'm talking about this bypassing and lag is because one of the primary functions of an electric turbocharger is to reduce lag. Now, basically what an electric turbocharger is, is just a regular turbocharger, nothing too fancy there, and then we, on the main shaft going through the turbocharger, we attach a motor. Now this motor goes to a battery, the motor can then be used to spool up the turbocharger, or it can be used to extract energy from the turbocharger. So first of all, let's talk about the spool up. Okay, so there are really two types of turbo lag. One is sort of a, a transient lag, and one's a steady state lag. So the steady state lag is more sort of characteristic function of the turbocharger itself. So you need enough exhaust gas to flow through the turbine to spool the compressor up to make meaningful boost and get the uh, compressor and turbine working on their efficiency points. So as we go through boost and RPM, we can see that we would go along, not be making much boost, not be making much boost. Then at a certain RPM, we'll start increasing boost and then we'll hit our desired target boost. Um, this is a function of the sort of um, compressor and turbine that we're using. Now the other one is a, a transient phenomenon which is caused by the inertia of the shaft. And this is basically, if we're at this RPM and spooling up to there, it will take a physical amount of time for the turbo to spool up. Now, the difference between those isn't really that important. I just thought I'd mention it anyway. They both manifest themselves in a similar feel. So anyway, we go along at a certain RPM and we'd say at this RPM that we're hitting our peak boost. So this is under our standard setup. Now what we can do with this electric motor is this boost is largely a function of how hard the compressor is spooling. So you can roughly correlate, assuming you're still in a reasonable range of the compressor operation, you can roughly correlate the boost pressure to the turbocharger RPM. I say roughly because obviously depending on what the engine is flowing, you may need more RPM to get a higher boost pressure or the same boost pressure. So we spooled up this motor. We spooled it up, the compressor is now working harder. The turbine is going to be barely working at all because the motor is spooling it. So this will mean that our new peak boost will be coming on about say here. So let's say our idle point of our engine is here. It can mean that the second we hit the gas off idle, we can rapidly increase the boost and then we can have boost available for a much longer period of time than if we didn't have the motor to spool it up. Now of course the motor's got to get energy from somewhere. So we've got a battery there. This is one of the reasons why it works well in a hybrid vehicle because we already have a substantial battery infrastructure available. Let's assume though that we're not in a hybrid vehicle. We need some way of generating energy. Now the alternator from the engine is going to provide some of this, but we need to recover some of this energy as well. So what happens here is this motor here can also work as a generator. So if we have a regular turbo setup, 
What you'll normally have on the exhaust is something called a wastegate. And what this will do is that if it senses that the compressor and the, the pressure circuit is over boosting, hitting more than the target boost, so let's say our boost curve is coming up here, our wastegate here will open, allowing exhaust to vent to atmosphere. This means that the turbine isn't going to be getting as much exhaust gas to it, and then as a result, it won't spool the turbo as hard. So we generally will use that to try and maintain pressure here. But if we can slow down the turbo without having to open this wastegate, we can harvest the excess energy that this wastegate is effectively just dumping away to the exhaust. We can get that back by using the motor as a generator in reverse. So when we are under hard acceleration, and this is a bit counterintuitive because it's actually when the motor is generating peak sort of power, we're trying to slow that turbo down because there's a big volume of exhaust gas. So when the motor's going hard, we're actually recovering energy to our battery. Then, if we lift the throttle, we cut off the exhaust gas flow through the motor. Then, what we do with that is, we then use the motor to spool this back up. So normally, you would end up with a dip in your turbo boost and revs if you lift the throttle because there's nothing generating. And this is what an anti-lag system is designed to do. An anti-lag system will induce air and fuel, well, induce fuel from the engine and air from usually somewhere else, into the system and keep the turbine spooled even when you're off throttle. And that's what makes the big crackles and pops is because it's doing little explosions in the exhaust and powering just the turbine. But that's very bad for turbo life. Uh, it also burns a lot of fuel, isn't very efficient, is very noisy. The electric turbo gets around this because it uses this motor to spool this assembly and thus can reduce the transient lag caused by you lifting off, having the turbo spool down and then get back on throttle and then you've got no boost available. So it removes all those sort of boost dips. Now the electric turbo obviously isn't without problems. I'm going to do a separate video actually breaking down some of the problems of the electric turbo. But just to give you an example, this motor when recovering energy is going to cause some degree of back pressure along this system because we're basically causing this exhaust gas to do extra work on the turbine. Now it's not only spooling the turbo, but we're also harvesting energy from it. So our back pressure increases here, and then we end up with poor scavenging in the engine and a higher propensity to knock. So we'll often still run a wastegate in conjunction with an electric motor. And many of you are probably looking at the current Formula One cars and seeing that they've just regulated for an external wastegate opening, you may notice the rear exhaust pipes have two little pipes below them, they're the wastegate pipes. And the thing is, is that you probably were thinking, oh, it's an electric turbo, it doesn't need a wastegate. Well, it still does, because that extra exhaust flow will cause problems if you're just trying to manage it with the motor. The advantage though is, is that you can get something known as a boost spike in your engine. So as you're going through this boost range, going up your rev range, your wastegate on a conventional engine, so no electric turbo, just a regular turbo, your wastegate may not have enough wastegate authority, which is basically the amount of gas can flow around the turbo, may not have enough to slow the turbo down to the point where you're getting constant boosts. And so you can end up with little spikes. And these are very damaging to the engine, particularly if you haven't tuned for it, or if you don't have a boost cut or something like that. So it's important to manage these. With the electric motor, this means that you can actually have improved authority over the speed of your turbocharger and thus solve this whole boost spiking issue because even if your wastegate doesn't have enough authority your motor can kick in and just take out the occasional boost spike and smoothen it off by generating more power to that battery taking more work out of the turbocharger and taking that energy away will stop any damaging engine conditions. So that's the basics of electric turbocharger operation explained. Um, I hope I've covered everything, I might have missed a few things. But stay tuned for those videos on the pros and cons of an electric turbocharger versus a conventional or sequential turbocharger setup. And hopefully you liked the video. And if you liked it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hopefully, see you next time.